Hi everyone. Welcome back to our series on building a three-tier architecture on AWS. In our previous video, we integrated key components like the application load balancer and relational database service into our architecture. If you haven't watched it yet, I highly recommend checking it out as it provides essential background information. You'll find the link in the description below. In this video, we'll take our architecture to the next level by incorporating Amazon CloudFront. This powerful content delivery network will significantly enhance our application's performance and scalability. So, let's dive into the details and explore how CloudFront fits into our three-tier architecture. Let's visualize our application architecture step by step. We'll begin by outlining the AWS cloud environment. Within this cloud, we'll create a VPC, divided into two availability zones. Each zone will contain three subnets, a public subnet for the presentation tier, a private subnet for the application tier, and a private subnet for the data tier. We'll deploy EC2 instances within the public subnets, forming the foundation of our presentation tier. These instances will host our React.js application, utilizing Nginx as the web server. For the application tier, we'll deploy two EC2 instances in the first private subnet of each availability zone. These instances will run our Node.js backend using PM2. Our data tier, a MySQL database, will reside in an RDS instance deployed in the remaining private subnet of one availability zone. The final private subnet will remain empty for this architecture. To balance the load across the presentation tier instances, we'll implement an application load balancer within the VPC. We'll employ Route 53 to manage our domain's DNS records. An SSL certificate will be acquired from AWS Certificate Manager. Subsequently, this certificate will be integrated into CloudFront. Ultimately, the end users will access the application securely via HTTPS through the domain name. To ensure our application is accessible via a domain name, we'll configure DNS settings using Route 53. We'll create a hosted zone in Route 53. Subsequently, we'll update the DNS records at our domain registrar. We'll obtain an SSL certificate from AWS Certificate Manager to secure our application. This certificate will cover both our primary domain and its subdomains. To validate the certificate, we'll create corresponding DNS records in Route 53. To accommodate our three-tier architecture and leverage the benefits of load balancing across multiple availability zones, we'll begin by creating a VPC. This VPC will span two availability zones. Within each zone, we'll establish three subnets. A public subnet for the presentation tier, a private subnet for the application tier, and another private subnet designated for the data tier. Our final VPC configuration will include an internet gateway to enable communication with the external internet. To facilitate outbound traffic from private subnets, we'll also deploy a NAT gateway within one of the public subnets. To streamline EC2 instance management, we'll enable auto-assign public IP for instances in public subnets. This setting will automatically allocate a public IP address to each EC2 instance upon launch, simplifying access via SSH and making the instances accessible over the internet. With our VPC established, we'll begin provisioning EC2 instances. Before launching instances, we'll create a security group for the application load balancer, allowing inbound HTTP traffic from any source and outbound traffic to all destinations. We'll launch a total of four EC2 instances, two for the presentation tier in the public subnets and two for the application tier in private subnets. For the presentation tier EC2 instances, we'll create a security group permitting inbound HTTP traffic from the ALB security group and SSH traffic from any source. For the application tier EC2 instances, 
we'll establish a security group allowing inbound custom TCP port 3200 traffic from the presentation tier security group and SSH traffic from the presentation tier security group. Both security groups will allow all outbound traffic. We'll start by establishing the data tier with an RDS MySQL instance. To begin, we'll create a security group for the RDS instance, allowing inbound MySQL traffic from the application tier security group. Next, we'll define a DB subnet group specifying the availability zones and private subnets for the RDS instance. With these components in place, we'll create the RDS MySQL instance. To manage and populate the database, we'll need to establish an SSH tunnel to access the RDS instance via MySQL Workbench. Once connected as the admin user, we'll create a new user, database, and grant necessary privileges. Finally, we'll log in as the new user to create tables and import data as required. Let's configure our application tier EC2 instances. We'll begin by accessing our application tier EC2 instances. Once connected, we'll install Git, clone the necessary repository, and set up Node.js. Next, we'll update the database credentials within the backend Node.js application. We'll install the necessary project dependencies. Subsequently, we'll employ PM2 to manage the application. Finally, we'll initiate the backend application to serve requests. These steps will be replicated for the second application tier EC2 instance. Moving to the presentation tier, we'll access the EC2 instance. If not already installed via user data, we'll install Nginx. We'll set up Git and clone the necessary repository. Subsequently, we'll install Node.js and configure the front-end environment variables. We'll install the necessary project dependencies. The React application will then be built, with the resulting files copied to Nginx's default web server directory. Finally, Nginx will be configured to serve the front-end application. These steps will be replicated for the second presentation tier EC2 instance. To distribute incoming traffic across our presentation tier instances, we'll create an internet-facing application load balancer. We'll begin by setting up a security group for the ALB, allowing inbound HTTP traffic from any source. As we've already established the security group in a previous step, we won't need to recreate it. Next, we'll create a target group to register our two presentation tier EC2 instances. With the security group and target group in place, we'll proceed to create the application load balancer. Since we're utilizing CloudFront for HTTPS, we'll configure a single HTTP listener for the ALB, directing traffic to the target group. Before proceeding with CloudFront configuration, let's verify our core infrastructure. You should now have a clear view of the EC2 instances deployed for both the presentation and application tiers. Additionally, the RDS instance for our database is in place. Finally, the application load balancer is configured to distribute traffic across the presentation tier instances. With these components established, we'll move on to creating the CloudFront distribution. To optimize content delivery, we'll create a CloudFront distribution. The origin for this distribution will be our previously created application load balancer, configured to use HTTP. To enhance security, we'll redirect HTTP traffic to HTTPS. For simplicity, we'll disable the web application firewall and select a limited number of edge locations. Next, we'll add our domain and subdomain as alternate domain names, selecting the previously obtained SSL certificate. With these settings, we'll create the CloudFront distribution, allowing sufficient time for deployment across edge locations.
To route traffic to our CloudFront distribution, we'll create DNS records within the previously established Route 53 hosted zone. We'll create two alias records, one for the root domain and another for the subdomain. These records will map the respective domains to the CloudFront distribution. Now that our three-tier application is deployed, it's time to test it. Let's access our domain and subdomain to see if everything is working as expected. Alright everyone, that's all I have for today. I hope you found this video helpful in the context of cloud computing. See you next time with another exciting topic. Leave a comment below with any questions you have. Don't forget to subscribe for more exciting tutorials. I've also included a link in the description below to a detailed article about this topic.